guys, Stephanie here and I'm back with more movie chatter. And if this is your first time here, I want to thank you for checking out my channel. If you're a regular, welcome back. This is a movie channel, so everything I talk about here is movie related. I do reviews, collection updates, top 10 lists, and videos that I post every week where I give you some suggestions for Blu-rays and rentals to watch at home, as well as a few picks for people who want to head out and see a movie in the theater. So if this is the type of content you're interested in, this is the point where I tell you to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you'll know when I upload my videos. And what I have for you today is a Blu-ray haul. It is a rainy, horrible day in New Jersey, so I figured it would be a fun day to just sit down and go through a few things that I've picked up over the last few months because I know my recent hauls have been really focused on the Criterion be uh, collection because of the Criterion sale that took place in July. So I just grabbed a few things that I picked up along the way over the past few months and I figured I would show you guys. I have some steel books, I have some movies and Blu-rays and all different things. But uh, it, I just thought it would be a fun little video to do and it's nice and nice and light because I have some real uh, labor intensive content coming up. I have a Criterion segment that I'm almost done with. The, the dreaded top 10 list that has become a top, I don't know how many list, but you'll, you'll see when I, when I release it. And then I'm going to have my picks of the week probably posting uh, Wednesday or Thursday probably. Um, but I want to start out with a, a shout out to an Etsy store that I found. And I think you guys are going to really like this. Uh, I bought this for myself. I saw it on Instagram. I bought it for myself because I thought it would look cool in my movie room. And it's a VHS light. And I actually... I went with Jaws on the first one. You get to pick the movie. You can also pick the color. I went with green for the Jaws. You get to pick the color of the LED lights. And and it's nice because it has a battery pack because some there's a lot of these out there, but a lot of them have to be plugged in. And I didn't want anything that had to be plugged in, so this was this was the store that I went with. And the gal who runs the store is great to deal with. She I ordered two. I actually ordered the Halloween one as well and I did this one with a red light but I don't have any I didn't put the batteries in it yet so I can't show you the red but I did Halloween of course so we're gonna put him right back there but uh, I think these are great gifts and they're great for movie lovers movie rooms buy one for someone else buy them for yourself whatever they're relatively inexpensive I think the light itself is about twenty dollars but they are in the UK so there's a little bit of shipping involved but I can tell you she was great to deal with when she saw that I had two orders coming to the same place. I ordered them separately. She grouped them together and she probably saved me about $20 on shipping, which I thought was awesome. And the turnaround time was pretty good considering they're custom made. I think I waited about two weeks for my order to get from the UK to the US. So I am going to link her down in the description box. I think it's called Na it's Nancy's Jars. Um, and I'm sorry, I forget what the, the girl who owns the store, what her name is, but it's a, it's a great store and you can choose any movie you like. If it's your favorite movie, go ahead and, and check out her store. I'm sure it's in there. But um, just so you know, I am not being paid. I bought these myself. I am not being paid. So if you click the link, it's, it's all for her. I'm just promoting her because I think it's a really cool product and she runs a really nice store. So... When I find something good and something interesting that's good for movie people, I like to pass it on to you guys. But yeah, I'm not getting, I'm not being paid for this. This is just because I, I really like it and I really thought she was great to deal with. So yeah, definitely go check her out. They're a lot of fun. So now I'm just going to get right into my haul. I'm going to start with the Blu-ray with the uh, Blu-ray Steelbooks. And the first one, yes, I got it. Hocus Pocus, the Best Buy exclusive. And there's the back. And it's funny because I actually post a lot on Instagram, which I, I also have linked in my description box. And I had so many people on Instagram asking me how I managed to get these. I'm telling you guys, pre-order. You have to pre-order everything. Here's the disc art. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I am really active over there. I'm on there every day. Here's the interior with the Witch's Brew. Yes, the Witch's Brew written. And here's how it looks opened up. It looks like the leather book. So they did a really nice job. Anyway, I'm very active on Instagram. I share pictures from my collection every day. Um, if you want to chat, it's a great way to chat with me. Um, I always answer my questions, notifications, whatever. So check out Instagram and, and come say hello. I also got the Nightmare Before Christmas, the Glow in the Dark edition. So we have Jack there. And then we have Sally on the back. And I think I was so happy that Best Buy re-released 
Nightmare Before Christmas because I, w I was not into Steelbooks when the original Steelbook came out, so I missed it. Again, there's disc art, which looks really nice. I always like when they add the disc art. It just adds a little touch to it. And then here's the inside. It's all black and whites of the different characters from the movie. And then here's how the glow-in-the-dark Steelbook looks opened up. So we have that one. And then they have some older titles that they re-released. I got 8 Mile because I did not like the steelbook I had. There we have the shot of Eminem on the back. And also there's no discard on this one. But we do have inside artwork which is nice because a lot of times when they do these older titles they don't do any interior artwork. Oh and here's how it looks opened up. I'm sorry. A lot of times when they do these older titles, they don't add interior artwork, but they did a good job on these, so I'm really I'm really happy with the ones I picked up. I also got Predator. Love Arnold and Predator. And then simple image on the back, but effective. Here's the front, back, and spine. This one does not have artwork. It's just a plain blue disc. And then you have the helicopter inside but I think they did a really nice job on the uh, the predator one as well they they their their steel books are really really coming out with some good ones um, they look good and the uh, the artwork is good but yes if you want to get something I always say go with the pre-order when you see it come up on pre-order grab it because they sell out especially like the hocus pocus everybody's going nuts trying to find it just pre-order I also got Bad Boys 1 and 2 because I just love these movies. I think they're so funny. They're so much fun. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are awesome together. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen these. This is the 4K Blu-ray version. There's the front, back, and spine. And this does not have any interior artwork, but you have your two 4K discs. And then you have your two Blu-ray discs. So, yeah, they did a nice job with this one. And uh, I'm happy to have it on the, uh, the 4K. I haven't had a chance to take a look at the 4K, so I don't know how the transfer looks yet, but as soon as I do, I will let you guys know. And then this next little stack I have here, these are from Zavi. These are ones that I could not find in the U.S. And my first, uh, my favorite movie so far of 2018, Isle of Dogs. It's a simple image, but I think it's effective. And then we have the pro dog there on the back. And this one comes with a cool little extra. It comes with some cards. I'll show you. The, uh, the disc work on the art is very simple. It's not really, I wouldn't say it's really artwork. It just says Isle of, Isle of Dogs, and it has some uh, Japanese writing there. Then we have Atari on the inside. Some simple artwork. Simple but effective. I like it. I think it, I think it came out nice. And this is a Region B. I got this after I had already bought my, my Blu-ray, so I'm going to take my Blu-ray and put it in this. It also comes with cards of the different dogs. We have Brian Cranston, Scarlett Johansson is not Meg. The cards are cute. Uh, we have Jeff Goldblum as Duke, Bob Balaban as King, uh, Mara Kobayashi. I cannot. I will mangle that name. We have Atari. Bill Murray is boss. Oops, dropped him. Sorry, Bill. Tilda Swinton as the Oracle. Uh, Liv Schreiber as uh, Spots. And, of course, Edward Norton as Rex. So, I thought that was neat because I haven't seen any releases with cards or anything like that. So, I thought that was pretty cool. And then we have another Wes Anderson one, the Fantastic Mr. Fox. And then the back, good luck out there. And this is how it looks opened up. And we have some nice discard with the crew from Fantastic Mr. Fox. And then just some simple inside artwork with the fence, the fox peering, Mr. Fox peering through the fence. 
but I thought they did. Zavi always, um, I'm good with Zavi. They actually, one of the steelbooks that I got, um, it's coming up next. It came, the first one came damaged. They sent me out, it's the Mondo Jungle Book steelbook. It comes in a slip cover, clear slip cover. Has this image on the front. The first one came damaged. I contacted Zavi. They sent me out this one, a brand new one, free of charge. Didn't even ask for the first one back. So I have to say their customer service is really good. I'm very happy with them. Front, back, and spine. And then we have a similar image on the front. We have the art, the uh, disc artwork with the tiger. And then the inside is just a uh, jungle theme. A little jungle scene there. But yeah, it's it's nice and uh, I, I love the Jungle Book. Who doesn't love the Jungle Book? So I'm happy to have this in my collection. Stick that back in the sleeve. Now this next one I got from Zavi and then Best Buy has actually released the same exact steelbook uh, on their site. Fight Club. Like how many Fight Clubs can I have? I have a million of them. <laughs> That's the back. But it's such a nice steelbook. And you can still, I don't know if it's still available on Best Buy Online, but you might be able to check the stores and see. This is the front, back, and spine. And then the inside is just a picture of the two guys. And let me see. Yep, there's typical Fight Club artwork on the disc. That's stuff that we're all very familiar with that artwork. So that's a nice one. And like I said, I think you can still get it at Best Buy. I'm not sure. You might have to check your local stores. And then this last steelbook that I picked up from Zavi is from, it's a Studio Ghibli title. One of my very favorite favorites, Grave of the Fireflies. I, I just love this movie. I know it's sad. It's heartbreaking. But what a beautiful movie and a beautiful steelbook to go with it. And I was really happy to be able to pick this one up. And we have some nice artwork on the disc and very poignant artwork on the inside so those are all the steelbooks that I have picked up I mean I, th I think I showed you guys yeah I showed you guys the Deadpool and things like that that I that I picked up I'm not gonna re re show everything that I've shown already because I, I don't want to bore you guys with that but those are my steelbooks that I've picked up as of today. So I am going to cut away and I'm going to grab my sack of Blu-rays and I will be right back. Okay guys, I'm back and I have my first stack of Blu-rays. And just so you know, I'm not going to be talking about any of the Blu-rays and movies that I have spoken about in my previous videos, my picks of the week or anything like that. Because I just, I don't want to be redundant and I've already talked about them. So if you want to see those, you can always go back in my playlist and see them. But I'm just going to talk about things that I have not shown yet on the channel. So I'm just going to give you a quick little synopsis of each one and move right to the next one. And my first one is RBG. And this is a documentary about the life of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And regardless of what your politics are, what an amazing, amazing story this is. She's an amazing woman who's had an amazing life and an amazing love story with her husband. And really, she has done some incredible things and continues to do incredible things for a lot of different people. So if you're not familiar with Ruth Bader Ginsburg or you haven't seen anything about her, I, even if you have, I highly recommend seeing this one. It is so good. And I believe CNN is airing it, but I'm sure there's a million places you can stream it. But definitely, whatever side of the aisle you're on, definitely pick it up and, and just give it a shot. Because if for nothing else, see what she's done with her life and what a beautiful, beautiful love story between her and her husband. Amazing. So yeah, RBG, can't recommend it enough. And this next one, I wanted to love this one, but I came away kind of... Mm, American Animals. Uh, this is a true crime story about a group of young men who wanted to steal some of the world's most expensive books that were housed in a library near them and were only guarded by one librarian. And my issue with this was not so much, I thought the presentation of the movie was really creative because it was half documentary style where they had the actual people who committed the crime and then they would have kind of like a reenactment of the, of the events. But it just, I don't know, they were so all over the place. They were a mess. And what happens is the movie becomes a mess. So by the third act, the whole thing just falls apart. 
creative. It was very creatively done, but just, just a mess. So I don't know. I didn't hate it. I, I really didn't hate it, but I wouldn't say to run out and buy it. If you like true crime, give it a stream, red box it, rent it, you know, wherever you get your rentals. But if you want to see it, give it a look. It's like I said, it's pre presented in a really creative way. It's just their execution is just horrible and it affects the ultimately the outcome of the movie. But yeah, uh, give it a look, give it a rent. American Animals. And the next one here is from A24. Another one I'm a little ambiguous about, Lean on Pete. This stars uh, Chloe Sevigny, uh, Steve Buscemi, and Charlie Plummer. And Charlie Plummer plays a young man who has some questionable issues at home. His father's kind of a drunk and a womanizer and more of his roommate than an actual father figure. Some different things happen in his life and he ends up working at a racetrack for Steve Buscemi who owns several racehorses. And he becomes really attached to this one horse who goes by the name of Lean on Pete. And when Pete starts to underperform, uh, Charlie Plummer kind of realizes that he's going to be sent to Mexico where they, that is kind of code for slaughtering them. So he steals the horse and it's basically a young guy and a horse on a road trip and he kind of tells the horse his life story. And it wasn't horrible, it was just kind of bland. I guess it was a little bland. I know it got a lot, a lot of high praise. Some people really loved it. Some people were kind of uh, in the middle. I'm a little in the middle. Uh, I might have to give it a second watch to really give it the proper attention, but I was under impressed with my first view. I actually watched it twice. Um, the first time I only got halfway through and the second time I watched the whole thing, but again, not horrible, but it didn't blow me away like I kind of had hoped it would, but I don't know. May maybe give it a rent, stream it, whatever, but or Redbox it. I think it's in, I saw it in Redbox, but yeah, Lean on Pete, not bad, not great kind of in the middle. And this one is, it was very good, but I'm really conflicted by the ending. Ethan Hawke, um, this is from A24 too, Ethan Hawke in First Reform. And I know a lot of people are really loving this one. I really enjoyed the first two acts. I was, a, Ethan Hawke is fantastic in this. I was a little thrown by the third act and the ending is really kind of left to open to interpretation. So if you like those kind of movies, you're going to like this. Um, it's definitely a thinker, but it's not bad. It's not a bad thinker. I think I have to give it a second watch so that I can really sink my teeth into it and, and really get my head around it because I was a little bit tired when I watched it. And that's definitely not the way to watch this movie because this is a really deep movie about a lot of heavy subject matter. So yeah, first reformed, I, I would give it a look. And this last one I have not seen yet. This is another one from A24 starring Jessica Chastain, who I absolutely love. It's called Woman Walks Ahead. And it is the true story of a woman, I'm trying to read her name, Catherine Weldon, played by Jessica Chastain. And she is an artist and she wants to go paint the um, uh, sitting bull. So she goes to North Dakota to paint Sitting Bull, and this is the story of what happens once she gets to the, uh, I guess it's the Lakota Reservation. Yeah, it's the Lakota Reservation. But um, it's supposed to be fantastic. I think it's, it gets like four and a half or five stars uh, almost across the board on Amazon. So I'm really looking forward to checking this one out and giving you more in-depth thoughts on it. But it looks to be a good one, and Jessica Chastain is pretty much solid in everything. And this one I picked up on a recommendation. It looks like a crime caper movie. It looks like it's pretty intense though. It is called Low Life. I will read the back. It says, what happens when you throw together one fallen Mexican wrestler with, a serious, with serious rage issues? One just out of prison ex-con with a regrettable face tattoos. Face tattoos are pretty regrettable. Uh, and a recovering junkie motel owner in search of a kidney. So that's what we have here in Low Life. It sounds like a lot of action. I've heard it's really well done and really well executed. So I am looking forward to giving this one a look and again, getting back to you with more in-depth thoughts. But Low Life sounds like a good one. And this one has been getting really high praise too. And I love Joaquin Phoenix. This one is called You Were Never Really Here. And Joaquin Phoenix, Joaquin Phoenix um, plays a, a former veteran who goes out in search of missing girls. And I've heard a lot of theories about this one. 
I'm not going to get into it, but I'm really looking forward to sitting down with this one and sinking my teeth into it because, again, I heard it's a real thinker, but a really, really great film, and I hear Joaquin Phoenix is fantastic in it, which doesn't surprise me because I love him and everything. So, yeah, you were never really here. Check it out. And this next one is part of the Olive Signature Series. It's an older film. Um, it's called Bound, starring Gina Gershon and Je Jennifer Tilly. They got a little something-something going on there. Anyway, it's a, kind of a crime caper movie. Jennifer Tilly's character is married to a mob guy who's housing a lot of money, and they're trying to, the gals are hooking up trying to figure out how to get it. But they did a really nice job on me. These Olive Signature um, collections are really nice. Comes in a slip case. It's a nice heavy-duty slip case. Comes in a clear case to house the Blu-ray. And it's got the same art in the front and the back. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of a cross between Arrow and Criterion. Because you have the inside artwork. And here it is again and there's no disc art it's just red but then it also comes with a nice essay book and there's the girls with the money but this is a great movie if you haven't seen it, it it's it's from a ways back I don't know if they say on here 1996 so this is an older one but I remember seeing this one right out of college and Wow, this if you like crime movies and like gangster type movies, this is a really, really solid pickup and what a great addition. This looks great and sounds great and I, I think it's really worth the pickup. It's again from the Olive Signature Series Bound. And there's these are a few classics that I just upgraded from my DVD to Blu-ray. Orson Welles in Citizen Kane, which I have heard rumors that it could be getting another... I know Criterion released it on Laserdisc, but I hear it may be coming out to Criterion Blu-ray, which would be awesome, but for now I have this one. We also have Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman in Casablanca, or Casablanca, however you want to say it. That's another classic. And then another Humphrey Bogart one, The Maltese Falcon. So those were three classics that I had on DVD that I wanted to upgrade to Blu-ray, so I picked them up on Amazon. Then I have a few DC uh, animated movies. The first one is Freedom Fighter The Ray. I don't know anything about this particular character, but I love all the DC animated ones, so I figured why not give this one a whirl. And then I got one in 4K from DC. It's called The Death of Superman. So I am really looking forward to this one. I thought it was R, but it's PG-13. But let me tell you, these DC animated movies are great. If you haven't checked them out yet, definitely pick one up. Give it a look. Start with this one. Why not? It's a, they're, they're really, really good. So highly recommend those. And then I grabbed one from uh, Mill Creek, which is a series. So it's, it's a, a TV show. And this is series episodes, um, seasons one and two. It's called Documentary Now. And it's a spoof on documentaries. It is supposed to be hilarious. I do not have cable, so this will be my first look at this, but I hear great things about it. And again, they did a nice slipcase, and they have, I think it's just two discs. Yep, two discs. They both have disc artwork. And it's supposed to be a lot of fun, so I'm really looking forward to checking out documentary now so it comes with a it actually comes with two blu-rays and a digital copy so if you want to pick this up uh, it's available on Mill Creek and I believe I got this one on Amazon so definitely check that one out and I'm gonna grab my last stack which is Scream Factory so it'll make all the horror fans happy and I will be right back and we'll wrap this one up okay guys I'm back and I have my last stack of movies and these are all from Scream Factory so it'll make you horror fans uh, happy and my first one is Pie Wacket. And this is a story of a young gal who is living with her mom. They recently, her father has recently passed and the mother is grieving. So she decides she wants a change of scenery. She wants to pick up and move. And they would be far away from her daughter's friends and school. And everything in her life would change. So the daughter is obviously very upset. Her and her mother are fighting. And she actually seeks solace 
in some, she dabbles in the occult a little bit, a little bit of black magic, and she actually meets a, an author of a book at a book signing, and he tells her, you know, stay away from those spells, they're dangerous, so if you don't know what you're doing, just stay away from them. Anyway, she decides to do this spell where she summons the pie whacket uh, to come and kill her mother. The mother and her then make up, mom apologizes, and all is well, until weird things start happening, and we know now pie whacket is among us. But you don't actually see the pie whacket, I think, until about 40 minutes in, which was really cool because it leads to this really strong undercurrent of constant anxiety. Like, you never know when it's going to show up, which I really did enjoy that about the movie. My one big beef with this movie, if, if I have one, is the ending. I felt like the story went along at a nice clip, and we had this nice tension going, and things really start to roll, and then there's only 10 minutes left, and they have to wrap everything up. I felt like the ending was a little bit rushed, so I wish they had put some more time into the ending, maybe add another 15 minutes onto the movie, and you have a home run. But other than that, I thought it was pretty good. It's definitely worth a rent or a stream, but yeah, Pie Whack It, give it a look. It's a pretty pretty good one. It's decent. So I, I did, you know, I did enjoy that one for what it was. Uh, this next one, the next two are from John Carpenter, and this one is from an older one from Chevy with Chevy Chase and Daryl Hannah. Memoirs of an Invisible Man, and I remember seeing this years ago and loving it, and I thought Chevy Chase was phenomenal in this role. It's a very different kind of a role for him, but I have not seen it in a long time, so I'm really looking forward to revisiting it and seeing what Scream Factory has done to it, because I'm sure whatever they did is, is top-notch. So yeah, Memoirs of an Invisible Man. And this next one uh, stars Sam Neill in John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness. He plays an author whose books are literally driving people insane. And I have not sat down with this one, this particular edition, and given it a look. I've seen it in the past, and I remember loving it. So I'm really, again, looking forward to revisiting this one. And yes, mine did come with the slipcover. I know there was a little hubbub on Instagram about people getting copies with missing slipcovers. Scream Factory does uh, promise slipcovers. They guarantee slipcovers for the first three months of a release. So I know if you get a new release without a slipcover, if you contact them, I have heard they will send them out to you. So good to know. But yeah, In the Mouth of Madness, it's a good one. And this next one convinces me that Joan Crawford can absolutely play any role that she was given. It's called Straight Jacket, and it stars Joan Crawford. And she goes nuts when she finds her husband in bed with another woman, and she kills him with an axe. And she's then sent to a mental hospital where she spends 20 years and when she is released she goes to live with her daughter and when murders, axe murders start happening in the nearby area of course they believe Jones Crawford, Joan Crawford's character is to blame but if you want to see a really good uh, axe murder check out Joan Crawford in Straight Jacket. It, it's a lot of fun, it's a good one and, and again I'm convinced that she can play anything. She pulled that off and the next one is another one of my favorites, Vincent Price in The Tingler. And they describe The Tingler as a parasitic creature that grows on the spinal cords of terrified people. And what happens is if the people scream, it kills The Tingler. If they don't scream, The Tingler is going to kill them. So uh, Vincent Price's character is actually able to remove the tingler from a woman who was a mute and was scared to death by her husband. So she's gone and they remove the tingler. He now has it and it escapes. It's running, it's running amok. So it's a lot of fun. And if you like Vincent Price, you're going to enjoy the tingler. And again, it's from Scream Factory. So I'm sure I haven't looked at this edition yet, but I've seen it in the past. Um, I'm sure everything on it is top notch, but yeah, give the Tingler a look. And how could I not get Return of the Living Dead Part 2? This was a recent release. This just came out um, in, in the past few months. And again, yes, it came with the slipcover. And you have disc art. So you get the disc art. And then you have reversible art on the inside. So... Typical from Scream Factory, everything is top notch. So if you like your zombies and you like your living dead, your whole living dead thing, definitely pick up Return of the Living Dead Part 2. And this one is one, I've had my eye on it for a while. I've seen the trailer a few times and I finally decided to pick it up. It is called The Housemaid. And this is actually, it's a foreign language film. Uh, it's in Vietnamese, subtitled in English. 
a woman takes a job as a housekeeper um, and she ends up having a, a, she falls in love with the owner of the house who hired her and apparently his ex-wife who has passed um, his her spirit is lingering in the house and she is not happy about the new relationship so I guess bad things start to happen and again I'm going by the trailer I haven't watched it yet but I'm really looking forward to it because I hear good things and the trailer looks really good and you know I love my foreign language horror so yeah definitely uh, housemates give it I will definitely come back to you guys with more in-depth thoughts when I actually sit down with that one and this is another one that I'm going by the trailers it stars Liv Tyler so I haven't seen her in a movie in a long time it's called Wilding Beware of the Beast Within and there's a young girl who was raised by someone who she calls daddy I'm not sure if he's actually her father or not but he kept her locked away and apparently she seems to have some sort of a werewolf thing going on it seems like it's a werewolf movie and I guess Liv Tyler's character tries to help her and the girl just wants to be running through the wild like the werewolf would drive her to do. So I guess her inner werewolf is coming out. But it looks really good and the trailer is very interesting. So I saw it a couple times and I figured I would give it a shot and pick it up. So it's kind of a blind buy. So I will definitely let you know what I think of it after I sit down with it. And my last one... Is one, this is something that I have been searching high and low for. It is out of print. It is the first uh, series. It's the first set of the Vincent Price collection. And it has on it The Pit and the Pendulum, The Red Mask of Death, The Haunted Palace, uh, or I'm sorry, The Mask of the Red Death, The Haunted Palace, uh, Witch Finger General, The, Ab the Abominable Dr. Fives, The Fall of the House of Usher. So it has most of my favorite Vincent Price titles, and it's, it was an out-of-print title, and I managed to find an eBay seller who was willing to sell it for a reasonable price, so I'm really, really excited to add this to my collection. And this is just one of those, it's my holy grail, and I finally uh, got my hands on it. So now I have all three, set. I have one, two, and three, so I'm very happy about that because Scream Factory unfortunately lost the rights to keep printing this particular series. So happy to add this to my collection. So that's it. Those are my Scream Factory uh, pickups for recently. And that, in, that concludes my Blu-ray haul for, I guess you could call it a summer Blu-ray haul. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me some comments. Subscribe. Hit the bell. Share. Do whatever you want to do because... I appreciate you guys just showing up. And like I said, I have a lot of labor-intensive videos coming up. I'm going to get that top 3,000 list coming to you. It's the top 10 list that's taken forever. I have a new Criterion segment that I'm going to um, drop very soon. I'm looking forward to that. I have some great titles that I've previewed, and I want to talk to you about them. And, of course, my picks of the week will be up later this week. So that is going to do it for me today. So until next time... That's a wrap.